coach owners prefer a leak-free propane gas system, right? Sounds like a silly question, but when I query attendees during my seminars, I often ask, how many here can guarantee with absolute certainty there are no propane leaks within the gas system on your coach? At best, one or two hands are raised, if any. Though everyone agrees it's a good idea to not have propane leaks on the coach, only a small percentage of owners ever have the system tested. I advocate it should be tested regularly, at least once per year at a minimum. There are three basic reasons for when the propane system should be tested. Whenever you smell the presence of propane. Though propane is inherently odorless and colorless, an odorant called ethyl mercaptan is induced into the liquefied propane so that its presence is indeed noticed if released to the atmosphere. However, it's also common to smell the mercaptan when the container volume is very low or has been recently refilled, perhaps overfilled. Another reason? When operational problems with the gas burning appliances are manifested. A problem with more than one appliance at the same time might be an indication of a propane system problem, though not necessarily a gas leak. And finally, when in doubt. For example, you're not sure if that furnace ignition problem is system related or internal to the furnace itself. Maybe you just had the ASME tank filled and you have a lingering odor of the mercaptan, or perhaps you just cannot remember when you had the propane regulator or system tested the last time. Any of these may produce doubt in your mind, so if you have any doubt whatsoever, have the system tested. There are three specific tests required by the propane system, which should be performed periodically by a certified or master certified RV service technician. Though performed by the professionals, I do believe coach owners should also, at the very least, be aware of these important maintenance procedures. Can you really ever be too careful with propane? The three test procedures we teach to professional RV service techs are setting the propane regulator delivery line pressure, measuring the regulator lockup pressure, performing a time pressure drop test. You might recall an earlier video in this series where we explored how a pressure regulator actually works. If you need a refresher, feel free to watch that video again. One of the reasons why we recommend taking your coach to a professional is because specialty equipment and specialty training are required in order to properly perform these three tests. A manometer a manufactured specialty test device, leak testing solution. Some technicians, however, may use an electronic leak detector instead of a bubble solution. The manometer can either be a tube type manometer like this one, or they may opt for a dial type manometer like this one. When filled to the proper level, the tube type, however, is 100% accurate. I sure like that percentage. But oftentimes it's easier to use a dial type or a gauge type manometer as long as it's calibrated regularly. The knowledgeable techs calibrate this one by using this one. To properly set the pressure, the first thing the pro technician will do is turn the propane completely off at the container and be sure each appliance is completely turned off as well. Next, they will gain access to the pressure regulator itself. Most will all be protected by a plastic cover like this one. And ultimately, the regulator outlet hose, the low pressure hose, is disconnected at either the outlet of the regulator or perhaps at an easier downstream junction such as you see here. The specialty test device shown earlier is then inserted between the output of the regulator and the remainder of the system. In our case, it was easily accomplished right here. Since these connections consist of flared fittings, no sealant is ever required. Then the hose from the manometer is connected to the test device. It simply fits snugly onto this barbed fitting. Next, the propane container's service valve is opened all the way. Propane is now flowing through the regulator, through the test device, and into the remainder of the distribution piping system. But in order to properly measure and set the pressure, the regulator must be at work, actually under a load. This fitting on the test device contains an orifice that simulates a 75,000 BTU draw on the regulator, about a 50% load. 
The valve for this fitting is slowly opened, allowing gas to expel through the orifice. And the valve for the manometer is opened to measure how much pressure is actually being delivered to the propane piping distribution system. If it's too low or too high, the technician will adjust it by turning the adjustment screw. All propane appliances on motorhomes are designed to operate properly at a fuel delivery pressure between 10 and 14 water column inches. Like I mentioned in another video in this series, we normally might think of pressure in terms like PSI, pounds per square inch, like air in our tires or air in the air brake system. But the pressure in the RV propane system is so slight, we use an increment of measurement called water column inches. For RV appliances, the optimum setting is 11.0 inches of water column. Once the regulator has been adjusted and stabilized at 11 water column inches, the orifice fitting on the test device is turned off, simulating all the appliances being shut down. As the orifice fitting is turned off, the pressure noted on the manometer gauge will rise a little. This part of the test is the lockup test. Regulator lockup occurs when all the appliances are turned off, but the service valve is open at the container. It's the point at which the system has pressure but no flow. The regulator simply locks up. The typical rise in pressure is about one more water column inch, but it may rise a little higher, but it must not creep above 14 inches overall. If it continues to rise above 14 inches, the regulator has failed lockup and must be replaced. If it stays constant below 14 inches, the pressure is set properly and lockup has occurred. The regulator is indeed viable and in working condition. The final of the three tests, and the one in which we'll be able to determine with 100% certainty, is the time pressure drop test, or leak test. Still with the test device in place as before, the service valve at the container is once again turned completely off. Using the orifice fitting shutoff valve on the test device, the pressure is reduced to approximately 8 water column inches. Note that 8 inches is below the set pressure of 11 inches. Once bled down to 8 inches or so, with the service valve on the container closed and all the appliances turned completely off, the technician will wait a minimum of 3 minutes. I actually like to run this test for about 10 minutes. If there's no drop in pressure in three minutes or so, there is no leak anywhere within the propane piping system. If the pressure drops yet further, even a little bit, a leak indeed exists and more troubleshooting is required. This test determines if a leak exists, it's up to the technician to determine where that leak is. So further troubleshooting is indeed in order. But if the pressure creeps up above 8 inches during this test, that means there's a possible leak through the service valve. Even though it's turned completely off, gas is still passing through. Not good. This mandates a new service valve on the container. But if no drop in pressure is measured on the manometer or gauge during the test, that coach is 100% leak free. At this point, the tech will remove the manometer, the test device, and reinstall all the original low-pressure hoses that were disconnected. The final step is to open the service valve on the container and bubble test each fitting that was disconnected and reconnected to be sure no gas leak was actually caused during the test procedures. There's one caveat concerning these testing procedures, however, that many technicians overlook. The ambient air temperature and the temperature of the piping distribution system must be the same or very close to it. False readings can occur if, for instance, a coach has been traveling in frigid weather and then driven directly into a heated service shop and these tests performed immediately without allowing the piping system, the regulator, the propane container, all to acclimate to the warm air temperature inside the shop. They must be uniform in temperature in order to be accurate. But performed annually at the very least, or more often if doubt exists, or when an appliance malfunctions, these three tests will keep your propane gas flowing smoothly, thereby providing your appliances with just the right diet of fuel to operate properly, thereby keeping you on the road instead of in the repair shop. 
So there you go. On behalf of FMCA, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another edition of Motorhome House Calls.